Hello everyone, my new character Persephone would like to introduce you to Chao Shang Hu. His fake profile on Facebook had been deleted by the time I came to make this video, so very annoyingly, as often happens, the conversation is upside down. Hi Persephone, he said. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you doing? And how's the weather there? I'm very well, thanks, said Persephone. It's just started raining. How's the weather where you are? It's OK, he said. I'm from Harbin, China, but I live in Miami, Florida. Currently, I'm in Israel for work purposes. You know, the usual complicated story. If the person that you're talking to online starts by telling you that they're from one place, live in another and are working in a third, you're almost certainly talking to a scammer. Well, he said, I was attracted to the simplicity of your profile and chose to be here in your circle of friends. I have to say that you have an amazing profile that reflects your positive attitude and healthy outlook on life. No, she doesn't. There's very little on Persephone's profile. It's new. I hope you don't mind if we're friends and share ideas together. How fascinating, said Persephone. What do you do in Israel? Oh, go on, have a guess. Well, you can see it if you're looking at the screen. Well, I work in the US Department of Health and Human Service in collaboration with the United States Army Medical Department, AMEDD, as, guess what, an orthopaedic surgeon. My job is to treat and care for wounded soldiers. Why did you leave China? asked Persephone. I'm from Harbin, China, he said, but I live in Miami, Florida. Why did you leave China? asked Persephone. Again, to which our man replied, currently, I'm in Israel. I left China a very long time ago. Why did you leave China? asked Persephone for the third time. I left China when I was five with my parents to the US, he said. So you aren't really from China, are you? said Persephone. You're American from the US. Do you have an American name as well as a Chinese one? I left China at a very young age, he said, but my feelings as an Asian haven't changed much. I only have a Chinese name. I'm Chao Xiang, he said. How about you? What? said Persephone. Do you think I've changed my name? That's not what I meant, he said. I'm actually asking, where are you from? I live in Kirkwall in Orkney, said Persephone, who, as I said before, definitely doesn't have an Orkney accent, but she hasn't been there very long. Oh, really? he said. How's the weather there? Wet, said Persephone kind of sums up the weather in Orkney a lot of the time, I think. Apologies to all my Orkney viewers, obviously. It's a lovely place. I really enjoyed it when I went there. How's the weather in Israel? She asked. Where are you in Israel? The weather here is warm and I'm cool with it, he said. I'm in Tel Aviv. OK. Are you married, single or divorced, he said. Why do you want to know? asked Persephone. Because I'm attracted to the simplicity of your profile and your gorgeous smile. That's very sweet of you, said Persephone. I was divorced a long time ago. Oh, we seem to have similar experience about life, he said. I lost my wife six years ago. How is that even remotely similar to being divorced a long time ago, she said. And of course you've been married before. You already said you had a wife. We have so much more experience about life. And we have both been married before, he said. Most people have. Well, I will appreciate us being good friends in, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, sincerity, honesty and trust, although we just met. I don't know what you mean by that, said Persephone. We can share ideas and discuss about more issues as we talk more about ourselves. And as time goes on, there may be something great for us in the future. If you say so, said Persephone. Yes, dear. What's your work? Hello. I enjoyed talking with you and I would like us to continue talking. Unfortunately, guess what? I'm not always here on Facebook. Here's my WhatsApp number. And he gave her a number. Please send me a message. I don't use WhatsApp, said Persephone. I don't work anymore. My divorce settlement supports me. It's OK, he said. But do you have Google Chat? Yes, I use that. That's awesome. And so she gave him her email address. And, of course, they moved to Google Chat. Several people have commented recently that I rarely get to that all-important marriage proposal or demand for money. Well, Chao Shang is not going to disappoint you. Hi, he said, once they'd moved to chat. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm getting hungry, said Persephone, daring to raise the issue of food 
I need to go and cook some dinner. I'll be back soon. It's okay, dear, he said. I enjoyed chatting with you and hope to talk to you soon. Take care of yourself. Hello, she said. I'm back a couple of hours later. You're welcome, he said. What do you have for dinner? <laughs> Sorry, I've just read what she said. <laughs> to which Persephone replied, Alphabet soup and crackers. What did you have for dinner? A man, of course, didn't realise what she'd said. Well, do they ever? And replied, I had salad. Tell me what you do in Israel. She said, oh, sorry, you've already said. Why are the Americans treating wounded soldiers in Israel? Can't the Israelis do that themselves? I'm an orthopaedic surgeon, dear, he said. I work with the Department of Health and Human Services in collaboration with US Army. My job here is to treat both wounded American and Israeli soldiers. Why are there American soldiers in Israel? She asked. We're here on peacekeeping, he said. We're here acting as a resistance to the terrorist to prevent frequent attacks and ensure peace. Okay, said Persephone. Yes, dear, he said. How long have you been divorced? Yes, what? She said. Whoops, we cross-posted ten years. Wow! It's quite a long time. So don't you feel lonely sometimes? You know what comes next. I mean, loneliness... But not having a man next to you? No, said Persephone, I have lots of friends. It's okay, he said. As for me, I feel lonely a lot of times, and that's why I need to find my true love, a person that will love me as much as I'll love her. I have a feeling that destiny brought us together for a reason. As time passes, we'll find out if we're compatible with each other. And this was on a Friday. How much time do you think is going to pass before he decides they're compatible? Okay, said Persephone. That was quite a speech. Yes, dear, I see you as a very fine lady from your replies. Hopefully, you will be my forever friend. What are your hobbies and religious beliefs, he asked. I'm a seeker of truths, said Persephone. That's why I moved to Kirkwall. There are lots of very ancient spiritual sites here. Oh, really? He said. Yes, really, replied Persephone. And you knew she was going to say that. My hobbies, he continued. A reading, listening to music, sport, swimming and travelling. And I'm a Christian. I'm not against any belief. And when somebody gives you a list of hobbies, always do what my girls do. Ask them about one of them. They can never give you a proper answer. When you say sport, do you mean watching or taking part? She asked. They cross-posted and he said, What are your plans for the future? I'm meeting a friend for lunch tomorrow, said Persephone. Taking part in sports, he said. Which sports do you do? She asked. Like swimming, swimming, he said. And look, he'd listed that separately from sport on the list as he copied and pasted. That's only one sport, said Persephone. Which others do you do? You listed swimming as a separate hobby. Well, I also play golf when I was in the state. You know, only one state. OK, so when you say your hobby is sport, you mean that you play golf, I see. Yes, he said. Do you mind sharing your recent photos? My photos on Facebook, she said. I don't share others online. It has such negative vibrations. I only saw one on your profile, he said. You look so beautiful, with a gorgeous smile. So I want to see you more, the old emotional blackmail. And if the person that you're talking to tries emotional blackmail to get you to send them pictures... You're almost certainly talking to a scammer. Please don't send them. I'm sorry, said Persephone. Sharing photos electronically has negative vibrations that I can't overcome. I understand how you feel, he said. But I don't have any negative thought toward it. I'm here to be your forever friend. And I don't see any reason to go against our mutual correspondence. And if somebody does that to you and tries to force you into sending it, take a leaf out of Persephone's book. Stand up for yourself. If you're one of those men that won't accept a lady's answer and wants to try to bully her into something she isn't comfortable with, then I think it's best if you found someone else to talk to, she said. No, no, that's totally fine, Persephone, said our scammer, thinking that he might be about to lose his potential victim. I understand how you feel, knowing the fact that we don't know each other very well and all that, but that's not really a problem to me. As we talk, we can get to know more about each other as time goes by. And there's one thing you should know about me. Well, I'm a simple man by nature, Persephone. Little things I do can mean so much. Saying, I love you, means so much to me. 
I'm always very precise in expressing my views. I talk about my feelings without sugarcoating any words. So when I say I love you, those words mean the world. I also respect the decisions and opinions of my woman. I believe that if we both respect our opinions, there'll be no need for argument at all. Okay, thank you, said Persephone. You're welcome, he said. I miss chatting with you. How are you doing today? I went into town to do some shopping. What are you doing today? Wow! That's nice. What do you like to buy when you go out shopping? And do you like to go out with someone else? I asked what you're doing today, said Persephone, and I've never met a grown man who asked if I like to go out with someone else. Are you a kid, or do you just like being creepy? I'm just asking, he said. Sorry about that. For the third time, said Persephone, what are you doing today? I got off work not long ago. Now I'm in my apartment, resting. OK, you have to work Saturdays. Yes, dear, I work every day, he said. Don't you get any time off? I normally resume by 8am Israel time. That's after I've done my personal morning training by 6am. Just a couple of basic push-ups, sit-ups and a one mile times timed run. I report to office at 8am and I work for eight hours. That's a strange thing for a surgeon to say, don't you think? Can you imagine? Oh, look, it's four o'clock. Sorry, you just have to stand around aesthetic for the next 16 hours till I come back on duty. Office? asked Persephone. Yes, I have my office here. What do you do in your office? I'm surprised you have time for that, she said. My schedule are free. That's why I have time for that. He's obviously a good surgeon. Nobody wants him. What do you mean, your schedule are free? She asked. Do you mean you don't actually have any work to do? I mean, when I don't have any work to do, he said. Okay, do you just work for eight hours every day or do you sometimes work longer? Getting the point, a man finally replied. I'm sorry for the late reply. I only work longer when there's an emergency. Hello? You seem busy. Sorry, I was outside in the garden doing some tidying up. It's okay, dear. I thought you were mad at me for my late reply. No, said Persephone. I don't spend my life online like some people. I understand. Just wanted to let you know that I care. Are you free now or still busy with work? Good morning, dear. How was your night? Good morning, said Persephone a couple of hours later. Well, it was a Sunday. Just checking my messages and then I'm going out. I'll talk to you again later. It's OK, dear. Please let me know when you're free. So Persephone did. I'm home, she said. I had a lovely walk round the harbour at Strong Ness. But he wasn't there. He came back a bit later. That's lovely. Hope you're a little free for us to chat now. Oh, dear, we keep missing each other, she said. Some neighbours have kindly invited me to supper, so I'm going out again. I love chatting with you, he said. And I really wish we could keep texting. But I hardly see you online. Let's create time to chat, OK? You said to let you know when I was free, but you weren't here. I'm sure we'll find a time when we're both here. I'm at my friend's house right now. I'll probably be home in an hour or so. I'm home again, she said a few hours later. That man wasn't there. Now it's breakfast time, she said, and you still aren't here. This was on the Monday. Remember, it was on the Friday that I said to take note of how long it took him before he fell in love. Sorry, I was busy with work, he said. I'm free now. How about you? I'm here, she said. I'm glad you're here. How are you doing today? I was just doing some ironing. You seem to be busy all day. Isn't there anyone to help you? What are you talking about? said Persephone. Do you think I should sit around doing nothing? Is that what you do? I didn't mean it that way. I was thinking, you're stressing yourself much. And if the person that you're talking to online is constantly worried about whether household duties or whatever you're doing is going to stress you, you're almost certainly talking to a scammer. Stressing myself doing the ironing, said Persephone. Which planet do you live on? Wish I was there to help you do that, said our probably very unhelpful scammer. Or do you think I should employ a maid? She asked. Which country do you think I live in? In case it's escaped in Otis, it's 2022, not 1922. He sent a smiley face. What are you doing today? She asked. Well, I'm still at work, but I'm a little free, so I decided to check on you. I miss chatting with you. And if the person that you're talking to can't actually tell you what they're doing at work, and he's about to try, then there's a very high chance. Well, no, there's more than a high chance. And it's almost certain that you're talking to a scammer. What are you doing at work? She asked. Well, I've taken care of most of my patients, and they're doing great. Meaning? 
asked Persephone. I thought you were a surgeon, not a ward doctor. How many patients do you have? And how many operations have you performed this morning? Yes, you're right, but I have some wounded soldiers here and I take care of them every day. I have about 12 wounded who are responding to treatment. Probably another 112 that aren't if it's him that's treating them. Whatever that means, said Persephone, what kind of operations do you have to do? And so a man copied and pasted. I treat illnesses, disorders and issues relating to bones, joints, ligaments, tendons and muscles. No, said Persephone, what operations did you do for the 12 wounded you're taking care of? I know what a surgeon does. I'm asking what you've been doing. Some of them have dislocations, he said. Joint fusions I've been in and they're doing fine now. OK, said Persephone. Yes, dear. My washing machine has just finished, said Persephone. Well, it had. I need to go and hang up the washing. I'll be back soon. It's OK, he said. I'm so happy chatting with you. And I pray for our communication to lead to a fruitful end. Don't you wish so too? I'm back, she said. It's really windy outside, so the washing shouldn't take long to dry. I've no idea what you mean by a fruitful end. Well, I mean, I'm obsessed with you. And I hope this relationship leads us to marriage. Oh, my goodness, said Persephone. You're making me blush. I'd have to meet you first. Honey, I have actually thought of relocating to a place where I could live outside the United States. And now that I have probably found you, I will love relocating to Kirkwall because I want to spend the rest of my life with you, growing old with you, and making memories will be fun. Oh my, said Persephone, I don't know what to say. I've gone all trembly. I might need a large coffee and a long walk to calm myself down. I mean it, honey. We're not getting any younger, cheeky so-and-so. If I get into a relationship now, I want it to last for the rest of my life. I don't want a relationship that would only last a few months. I'm convinced about my feelings for you. Before I said I love you, I thought about it deeply. He's had two days to think about it. That's so amazing, said Persephone. No one has said that to me since my husband and I got divorced. Most men I meet are just two timers who want an affair but want to stay with their wives as well. In these few days that I've been talking to you, I have noticed your good qualities and how wonderful you are as a woman. Finding an intelligent woman with good qualities is difficult. Yes, finding an intelligent scammer with good qualities is even harder. That is, he said, I've been alone for a long time, too. Oh, I know what you mean, said Persephone. It's so hard to find a man who can have a proper conversation. That's true, honey. Many women just want money or sex. That's why I gave up on love. When I started talking to you, I never intended to fall in love with you. I didn't even take you seriously until the third day. Well, that was probably Sunday, wasn't it? I realised that you're very different from the women I've met or talked to. Falling in love is when you find someone with whom you feel absolutely comfortable, with whom you can talk freely, and with whom you want to spend the rest of your life. Persephone sent him a heart, and he sent her some hearts. I have to meet you, said Persephone. Can you come here? You make me happy, he said, because Google leapt in and felt some copying pasting coming on. You accept me for me. I don't have to hide. You let me be myself, and I thank you for that. You complete me. Before I met you, I never felt complete. With you in my life, I am. I love you for your passion for life. It's contagious. And most importantly, I love you because you're you. And me adding, and because she's divorced. And she's got lots of money. You're not like the others. You're brave, strong and willing to be yourself. That inspires me. That's me meeting and marrying a surgeon, said Persephone. My last husband was a dealer. Never knew what he dealt in, but he made a lot of money doing it, and he had to give me half when we divorced. Wow! That's lovely, he said, sending two hearts. How many years of marriage? You didn't care to know what he deals in. Hope I'm not asking too many questions. We were married for 15 years, said Persephone. I asked lots of times, but he just got angry with me, so I stopped asking. At that time, it was OK, he said. But I'm glad now that you're finally free from him don't have to go through all that anymore. To be honest, it was a relief when he left, said Persephone. I hadn't realised how oppressed I was feeling. I felt free at last. That's nice, dear, he said. We've left the past behind us, and I think all we need to do is to focus on the future. 
because I believe that the future is more important than the past. Do you think the same? I'm glad that I met you. I'm not here for endless online conversations, because I would like to meet you as soon as I retire from here. Won't you like us to meet each other? I already said I have to meet you and asked if you can come here, said Persephone. When do you think you'll be able to come? I can come, if you can apply for an urgent leave for me, and I'll be there once approved. How do I do that? asked Persephone. And if the person that you're talking to online tells you that you have to apply for their leave from anywhere, the army, a hospital, an oil rig, any job, then you know you're talking to a scammer. There's no organisation that I know of anywhere in the world that will allow someone else to ask for their employees to have leave. As an employee, it's always your responsibility to approach the HR office or your boss and ask for leave. Just for you to write to the leave department and tell them you want me to come on vacation or give them any reason that will get them quick approval, like I'm your fiancé. Leave department, said Persephone. Why don't you just email your HR department? They won't even know who I am. How much leave are you are entitled to annually? Honey, being in the US and being here is different. If I was in the US, I'd not have problems getting a leave. Here, we're on a mission. And the mission isn't accomplished yet. And also, my retirement requests have not been granted. That's why I'm having difficulties. Oh dear, said Persephone. He thought maybe she'd better be sympathetic if we were going to get to that all-important request for money. I don't remember who you work for. Well, I work in the US Department of Health and Human Services in collaboration with the United States Army Medical Department. As an orthopaedic surgeon, my job is to treat and care for wounded soldiers. The reason Persephone said that, of course, was because his fake Facebook account had been deleted by then. So you work for a US organisation, said Persephone. Not an Israeli one. What do you want me to do? I'm here on a contract basis, and it's not ended yet. What do you want me to do? asked Persephone again. I want you to apply for an urgent leave for me to come. I can make the inquiry on how to apply when I get to the office tomorrow morning. OK, let me know, she said. Yes, darling, I'll let you know tomorrow, as soon as I get to the office. Persephone sent him a smile. He sent her a kissy heart. My priority in life is to settle down with the right woman and share wonderful moments together, and forever. I'm sure you'll love Kirkwall, she said. I haven't been here very long, but everyone is so friendly. And if you like ancient history, there are lots of sites here. Of course I would love Kirkwall, he said. As I've heard, it's a transport hub with ferries and ancient history. Oh joy, give him his due, he'd looked it up. And I pray that our two dreams will come true. In a relationship, I seek for love, sincerity, mutual understanding and happy moments. What do you seek for in a relationship? Hello? I'm not sure I'd describe it as a transport hub, said Persephone, but it does have ferries. Yes, I've heard of the ferries too, he said. I like to explore places where it could be fun. We can go and visit some of the smaller islands, said Persephone. There are ferries to all of them. Wow! That would be nice, because I like ocean views too, he said. What do you do for fun? I mean... What are your fun activities? I love the historical sites here, she said. I spend a lot of time walking. What do you do? That's interesting, he said. Well, my fun activities, and look, he's got a different list this time, include camping, boat cruise, reading, travelling, swimming, and spending time with kids. Spending time with kids, said Persephone. What do you mean? I normally visit... The motherless baby home every holiday. And if the person that you're talking to tells you that they visit a motherless baby home, you're talking to a scammer. To spend some quality time with the orphanage children there and also give my little support to them the best way I can. I'll be very glad to build a happy family with you. Motherless baby home, said Persephone. Where's that? I render my support when I was still in US. They have motherless baby homes in the US? I don't think so said Persephone. I think you spent too much time in poorer countries. There's orphanage home in the US, he said, where people go to adopted from the foster care. If you say so, said Persephone, that doesn't make much sense. Well, it's not necessary in our conversation right now, he said. So, what are you doing at the moment? What do you think I'm doing, said Persephone. I thought I was chatting to you. Do you know something different? 
I'm glad to hear that, honey, he said. I still don't forget your beautiful face since I saw your photos. Your photo is in my head. How long do you think it will be before you can come here? She asked. Once the leave is approved, it only takes 24 hours, he said. Oh, my goodness. You could be here in a few days. How exciting. I have no idea where you can fly to from Tel Aviv. You'll have to look it up. Yes, dear. I will make the inquiry when I get to the office tomorrow and get back to you. I'm so excited, she said. I need to go for a walk to calm myself down. I see, he said. I wish I was with you now. How is the weather there today? And he sent her a photo. That's a photo of me. Today, he said. This noon, when I returned from work. Look what he's wearing, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking at the screen. Persephone looked up the weather in Israel. I can't show you, but it was 25 degrees when she looked, and it was about 8 or 9 o'clock at night, so it was probably warmer than that when he left work at 4 o'clock. That's Israel, she asked. Why are you wearing a jacket? Yes, is Israel, here in the military base, he said. That's a nose mask. I asked why you're wearing a jacket, not why you're wearing a mask, she asked. That's not a jacket, dear, he said. Is my office bag? Your office bag has sleeves and a collar. Keep trying, said Persephone. It's the blue thing that goes round your shoulders, down your arms and meets across the front, underneath which you're wearing a T-shirt. And if you're confused, I'll just scroll back and show you. There's his mask. That might be a shoulder bag. That's definitely a T-shirt underneath. And that's definitely something blue that's going down his arms and probably meeting in the middle. Confused, our man felt an explanation needed to be thought up, so he disappeared. Give a minute, please, he asked. Long enough to Google what's a jacket, asked Persephone. I was doing something that I said you should wait for a minute, he said. Five minutes later, okay, said Persephone. That's a normal T-shirt, he tried. Yeah, try again, said Persephone. Why are you wearing a jacket over the T-shirt? Why are you trying to avoid answering me by giving me silly answers? I hope you aren't going to be like this when we're together. You're confusing me the more, said our confused scammer. I wasn't wearing a jacket. Then what is that blue thing that goes down your arms, has a collar, meets in the middle and is over your T-shirt? That's a crossing bag, he dried. Stop making stupid excuses, said Persephone. Of course it isn't a bag. What is that blue thing you're wearing over your T-shirt? So she copied the photograph outlined the jacket and outlined the t-shirt and please 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 don't make any more stupid ridiculous idiotic excuses light finally dawned at least the reality that he couldn't pull the wool over her eyes oh i understand what you mean now he said i can't stand men who won't answer a question said persephone if that's the kind of man you are then i really don't think it'll work between us oh i understand what you mean now you mean you've googled the mean in the jacket I thought you were talking about my shirt, he said. Well, here is a dangerous zone, so I'm wearing a vest. It skipped my mind. I clearly asked about the blue jacket several times, so Persephone stopped making silly excuses. I'm sorry about that, he said. I don't like men who make stupid excuses instead of answering the question. Is that clear enough, she said, because she typed it all in uppercase letters. I'm sorry, dear. It's not what you think. Feeling that she'd better relent if we were ever going to get to that all-important request for money, Persephone gave in. I hope it isn't, she said, because if I have to ask you anything else several times before you give me a sensible answer, then I don't want to marry you. I don't like men who make stupid excuses instead of answering the simple question. I've been sincere with you, he said, and I don't want anything to go against our mutual correspondence. You are anything but sincere said Persephone, you were making stupid excuses to avoid answering a simple question. To be honest, it skips my mind, because your question was so fast, said our scammer. OK, that's it, I'm done, said Persephone. I'm sick of your pathetic excuses. Skip your mind, what a load of bollocks. I clearly, clearly, clearly asked you why you were wearing that blue jacket. I even drew it for you, on your own photo, the photo you took. I'm going for a walk. If you make one more stupid excuse, then it's over. It was when you drew it that I recall, he said. That's it, said Persephone. It's over. Goodbye. 
You took that photo, you sent it to me. You saw it when you sent it. Goodbye. Does that mean you're not talking to me anymore? Said our hurt scammer. No amount of compensation could quantify the extent of damages I might have caused to your heart for not answering correctly. But I'm very sorry. Hello. It means I've been for a walk to ask myself why you refuse to answer a simple question. If my ex wasn't that stupid, said Persephone. It's not a big deal, he said. It's my bad, OK? I accept it. OK, she said. I actually got dressed this way because today is Thanksgiving Day. This was Monday, the 10th of October. Let's forget it and hope it doesn't happen again, said Persephone. But they cross-posted and she read what he'd said about Thanksgiving Day. Oh, FGS. That's it, she said. You really, really, really think today is Thanksgiving? I just hope you're kidding me, because if not, you're a thick, stupid idiot. And if you are kidding me, it isn't funny. It's just stupid. I also went to have my prayers today, he said. Try to understand me first. And again, if the person that you're talking to online tells you that you don't understand them or try to understand them, you're almost certainly talking to a scammer. And it's usually because they've just said something that's completely rubbish. Try to understand you, said Persephone. You mean try to understand that you're lying to me and I've no idea when Thanksgiving is? Or try to understand that you don't know what a jacket is? Please leave me alone until tomorrow. Do you understand that? Please leave me alone until tomorrow. What good is this argument bringing right now? He said. Please leave me alone until tomorrow, said Persephone, so I can work out why you're lying to me. Good night. Good night, dear, he said, and he sent her a video from YouTube, which I haven't even looked at, but let's look at it now. Good morning, dear, he said the next day. How was your night? Good morning, she said. I tossed and turned all night. Have you been to the office to find out what we have to do? She asked. Yes, dear, I've done the inquiry, and they gave the procedure as follows. I miss you so much, he said. How are you doing today? Better than during the night, thanks. It's very windy but sunny today, so I'll probably go out exploring soon. I love the ancient sites here, and there are always more to find. I'm glad to hear that. You deserve to be happy all the time. What did the office say we have to do? She asked. I will send an email they gave me that you will forward the application to. And he gave her a very convincing United Nations Leave Department email address at yahoo.com. Here is the email, he said. And if anyone does that to you and tells you to email their company's leave department at Yahoo or Gmail or any other generic email address, you know you're talking to a scammer. All companies, and especially all large agencies, have their own domain names. So it would be something like HR department at un.com. And anyway... I've never come across any organisation that has a leave department. They have HR offices or personnel offices. And so he sent her the text that she had to forward to them. October the 11th, 2022, leave department, he said, to whom it may concern. I'm writing to the leave department on behalf of my fiance Chao Shang Hu, who's the chief orthopaedic surgeon in Israel, to be permitted to return home for a short vacation. I would greatly appreciate having him home as we plan our wedding and also to have his support. Thank you for your time and attention to my request. Your name. That's what you'll send to them, my love. Then, whatever they tell you to do, just do it, OK? I love you so much and I believe we can do this, OK? And right there is an example of what perfume addict would call love bombing. I love you so much. Flattering you, building you up to make you comply with their demands. If you refuse to comply with their demands, they do the opposite and insult you to make you feel bad until their victim gives in and complies with their demands. And then the love bombing starts again. How much money is this leave going to cost? Well, you're going to have to wait for episode two to find out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Please hit that like button underneath. Please share it with your friends, family and colleagues. Please subscribe to my channel, please comment down below and I'll see you again in episode 2.